So let's take a look at the trapping rainwater problem. The idea of this problem is that we are given an array of positive integers, which represents the heights in a map. Each of the heights has a width of 1, and we need to return the area of water this map can collect on a rainy day. In this example, black represents the heights, and blue represents the water that can be collected. Here the answer is 6, because 6 blocks of water are collected. One of the tricky parts of this problem is identifying how we can even calculate the area in the first place. In order to figure this out, we need to make a few key observations. The first is that we need to calculate each position individually. In other words, we need to iterate through each of the positions and calculate how much water that, that position can hold. For this example, we see that the units of water the first position can hold is zero. The second position is one. The third position is zero. The fourth position is one. And adding all these up, we get our grand total of six. So it's easy for us to see that only one block of water will fit in the second position here. But how can we algorithmically determine how much water each position holds? The key observation to make is how much water a position can hold is determined by the minimum of the tallest bar to the left of the position and the tallest bar to the right of the position. For this position, there is only one bar to the left, so it is the highest with a height of one. Among the bars to the right, the one at position 6 is the highest with a height of 3. Now we take the minimum of the two, which gives us a height of one bar of water. For this position 4, we see that the largest bar to the left is at position 3 with a height of 2, and the largest bar to the right is at position 6 with a height of 3. We take the minimum of the largest left and the largest right, which gives us 2. However, since this position itself has a height of 1, the position cannot hold two units of water, but rather two minus the position's height of one for one unit of water. Using this observation, we can produce a formula to determine how many units of water a position I can hold. This formula takes the minimum height of the largest left and largest right minus the height of the position I itself. There is one minor detail we must account for, which is when the result is negative. For example, let's look at the sixth position. The largest left is 2, and the largest right is 1. So taking the minimum of the 2 is 1. We then subtract off the current height of 3, leaving us with a negative result. Obviously this is incorrect as a position can't hold negative units of water, so we add a condition that if the formula yields a negative number, we say that the units of water this position can hold is 0. There is also another clever workaround to avoid negative numbers. What we could do is consider the position itself as a candidate for the largest left and largest right. If we do this, then for this example, the largest left is the position itself, and so is the largest right. And for an example like this, this would make the largest left itself and the largest right 3, again yielding 0 units of water as the answer. Now that we have developed a formula for calculating the water at a single position, it is quite straightforward to come up with a brute force solution to this problem. For each position, we simply have to calculate the largest left and the largest right values, apply our formula to get the units of water for that position, and sum this to a running total which will ultimately represent the total units of water this map can hold. So we start off with an outer for loop which will iterate through the entire array. We also create max left and max right variables which will represent the largest left and largest right bars for a given position i. But for now, we'll just start them off at zero. Now we must calculate the largest left with an inner for loop, which runs from position i to the left. At each iteration of the loop, we update the largest left variable by taking the max of the jth position and the current max left. Notice as I mentioned before, we're going to start this loop at position i to prevent a negative result when applying our water formula. Now we do the same thing, but we start at position i and go to the right in order to calculate the max right for this position. Again, notice how we start at position i rather than i plus 1. Finally, we use our formula that we produced earlier. We take the minimum of the max left and the max right, which we've just calculated, and we subtract off the height. Then we add this to the running total, uh, which we've called area. And finally, we return the area when we are finished calculating how many units of water each position can hold. The time complexity for this brute force algorithm is n squared, because for each position, we must iterate through the entire array to calculate the largest left and largest right. For space, we have constant space because we aren't allocating any extra memory aside from the constant amount of variables.
Now that we have a working solution, let's try and optimize for time and space. To do this, let's see what is costing us time in our brute force solution. We can see that the costly step is that for each of these bars, we must loop through the array to find the left and right boundaries. This requires n steps. So in order to speed this up, we need a way of looking up the left and right boundaries in constant time. Before I share how we do this, try and pause the video to see if you can figure it out. So the way we're gonna look up the left and right boundaries in constant time is we're going to pre-compute these boundaries values and store these boundaries for any given index in an array. So basically, before we calculate the area, we create a separate array, which will hold the largest left boundary for any given position. Then we create another array and loop through a second time and store the largest right boundary for any given position. Finally, we loop through the array a third time and calculate the amount of water a bar can trap. However, this time, instead of having to loop through and find the left and right boundaries, we use our largest left and largest right arrays to just look up the boundaries for a given position in constant time. Yes, this requires us to loop through our array three times, but in terms of runtime, O of 3n is still linear time, and this is certainly better than the quadratic time of our brute force solution. This is a dynamic programming approach and may be a bit confusing, so let's go over an example. So first we make two arrays, which will represent the largest left and largest right height for any given position. For now, they are all zeros, and I will abbreviate them as LL and LR. We will manually assign the largest left boundary for the first position as the height of the position itself because there's nothing to the left of it to compare to. For the subsequent positions, starting at i equals 1, we do the following. We will compare the current maximum left boundary, which is in the i minus 1 position, to the height of the current position. We will then take the max of these two candidates and assign it as the left max for this position. In this case, we are comparing the current max of 1 to the height for this position of 0, thus the max for this position is 1. For i equals 2, we compare the current max of 1 to this position's height of 2, and thus the maximum is 2. For i equals 3, we compare the current max of 2 to this position's height of 1, and thus the maximum is 2. For i equals 4, we compare the current max of 2 to this position's height of 0, and the maximum is 2. For i equals 5, we compare the current max of 2 to this position's height of 3, and the maximum is then 3. Continuing with this pattern will result in 3 being assigned as the max left for the rest of the positions. Now we move on to calculating the largest right array. We start on the right end and manually assign the largest right of the last position to itself because there's nothing to the right of it to compare to. For the subsequent positions, starting with i equals 7, we do the following. We will compare the current maximum right boundary, which is in the i plus 1 position, to the height of the current position. We will then take the maximum of these two candidates and assign it as the right max for this position. In this case, we are comparing the current max of 1 to the height for this position of 0, thus the maximum for this position is 1. For i equals 6, we compare the current max of 1 to this position's height of 0, and the maximum of the 2 is 1. For i equals 5, we compare the current max of 1 to this position's height of 3, and thus the maximum is 3. For i equals 4, we compare the current max of 3 to this position's height of 0, and thus the maximum is 3. Continuing with this pattern will result in the rest of the largest right positions holding the value of 3. Finally, we loop through the array of final time and apply our formula to compute the units of water for each position. When applying the formula, we use the largest left and largest right array to get constant time access to these values. In this case, with i equals 0, we take the minimum of 1 and 3, which is 1, and subtract the height, which is 1, yielding 0 units of water. For i equals 1, we take the minimum of 1 and 3, which is 1, and subtract the height of 0, giving us 1 unit of water. For i equals 2, we take the minimum of 2 and 3, and subtract the height of 2, which gives us 0 units of water. For i equals 3, we take the minimum of 2 and 3 and subtract the height of 1, which gives us 1 unit of water. We continue all this all the way to the end of the array, and finally return the accumulated area, which will hold our answer of 6. The time complexity for this algorithm is an improvement from our brute force algorithm to linear time. However, this comes at a trade-off of linear extra space because we need to create arrays of n size to store the largest left and largest right values. 
This solution is a great solution and is the best in terms of time complexity, but there is actually a better solution which runs in linear time and constant space. To get that solution, we must look at what's costing us. In this case, the arrays where we store the left and right largest values are costing us the n space. So our solution is going to have to eliminate these arrays, and I would recommend pausing the video here and seeing if you can figure out a way to do this. So the way to do this is with a two-pointer approach. In order to come up with this approach, the key observation we must make is that at any given point in time, when we are trying to calculate the trapped water for a particular bar, we only need access to the largest left and right boundary for that bar. However, in our previous approach, we store all the boundaries for all the bars. Therefore, this is where we're going to improve our algorithm. We need to devise a way to calculate the trapped water for a particular bar as we are determining the maximum right and left boundaries. So let's go back to our dynamic programming approach and take a look at how we calculated the left boundary. Notice that the largest left was either the largest left of the left neighbor or the index itself. So the largest left at an index has to either be the index itself or the highest of the left side. Notice how the largest left does not involve any values to the right side of a particular index. This is the same thing for calculating our largest right boundaries. When we are calculating the largest right boundaries, we are comparing the height of the particular bar and seeing if it is higher than the highest bar to the right of that index. Notice again that the largest right does not involve any values to the left of the ith position. Another thing we need to notice is that we always take the minimum of the left and the right largest when calculating the units of water for any given position. Putting all this together allows us to come up with the following algorithm. We can start two pointers at the end of the array, and we will also use two variables largest left and largest right to keep track of the largest left and largest right boundaries we have seen so far. Then while the left pointer remains to the left of the right pointer, we do the following. We check to see if the left or the right height is smaller. If the left height is smaller, we do one of two things. If the current height is greater than the largest left value, then we update the new largest left value and move the left pointer over one. If the current height is not greater than the current left, then there is some kind of dip in the heights and we have to calculate the units of water and add it to the area. If the right height is smaller than or equal to the left height, we do the same thing but to the right side. Notice in the case that the left and right heights are equal, it does not matter if you want to move the left or the right side. I've just arbitrarily chosen the right side. So we either update the right variable if the current height is larger than the current largest right, or we calculate the units of water and add to that area. This algorithm is a bit confusing and you might have some questions about why it works. Let's go over a sample run of this example first, and then I'll do my best to explain why this approach works. So we start off with the left and right pointers and the LL and LR variables initialized to zero. Again, remember that the LL and LR variables stand for the largest left and largest right heights we have seen up until this point. The height of the left and right are both one, so we go down to the else statement. The height of the right pointer is one greater than the current largest right of zero, so we update it and move the right pointer one spot to the left. Now the right height is zero and the left height is one. So the right height is less than the left height, so we go to the else again. Here the height of the right is zero and the current largest right is one, which is greater. So we add the largest right of one minus the height of zero to the area. Here right is still lower than left, so we again move to the else. Again, the height of zero is less than the current largest right of one, so we add one unit of water to the area. Now the height of the left is less than the height of the right, so we enter the if. The height of the left, which is one, is larger than the current largest left of zero, so we update the largest left variable. Now here, height of left is zero, which is less than the height of right, so we enter the if. The height of left, which is zero, is less than the current largest left, so we add two minus one, which is one to the area. The height of left is less than the height of right again, so we enter the if. The height of left, which is two, is larger than the current largest left, so we update it. The height of left is still less than right, so again we enter the if. Since now the height of left is less than the current largest left, we add to the area. Again the height of left is less than the height of right, so we enter the if. The height of left is less than the largest left, so we add to the area. Finally, left moves to be on top of right, so we exit the while loop and return the area of six. 
Now when I first looked at this approach, I was doubting if it would always work. So let me try and non-rigorously show why it does in fact work in all cases. A question I had is why should I no longer take the minimum of the largest left and largest right when I'm calculating the units of water? The reason is, let's say we're in this position. We know that if we are to make it to the area plus equals largest left point in our code, two things must be true. First, the height of the current left must be less than the height of the current right. This means that we are guaranteed that there is a higher bar to the right of the left pointer's position. And second, the current height must not be greater than or equal to the largest left boundary. In other words, it must be less than the largest left boundary. This means that the largest left boundary must be the limiting factor. A follow-up question might be, well, what if the largest left is larger than the current right? In other words, something like this would occur, where the largest left is 4, but the largest right is 3. Clearly then, should we be using the right boundary of 3 instead of the 4? Well, the thing is, this situation would never occur according to this algorithm. Here's why. In order for the largest left to be updated to 4, it means that at some point, the height of the left boundary must have been greater than or equal to 4. And in order for us to enter this if block, we know that the height of the left had to be less than the height of the right. This means we have already calculated and moved to a block where the height of the right was less than the height of the left because we know at some point in time, the left had to have been on 4, and when it was on the 4, if the right was less than the 4, it would have entered the else block and iterated through adding the units of water as necessary. Thus, we can conclude that an incorrect solution like this could never occur. This algorithm essentially boils down to the fact that we are either updating a largest variable or calculating a unit of water moving from left to right only if we are guaranteed that there is a higher bar to the right. And we are updating or calculating from right to left only if we're guaranteed that there is a higher bar to the left. The time remains as linear, but for space, we get an improvement over our dynamic programming approach to constant space as we are only using a constant amount of variables. So that's it for the trapping rainwater problem. If you have any additional questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments section of this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.